Sebastian. Let's talk Itania. Uh, yes. I mean, we're here anyway. One more time. One more time <laughs> for the road. Uh, congratulations again, buddy. It's always good to see you. Thank you, man. This Me is too. A, this, is, this one, as you well know, when we first spoke about it, when it debuted in Toronto um, just a couple months ago, and uh, you know, it doesn't often happen like this where it's so accelerated. It speaks to how immediately this resonated with audiences that yeah. it's being pushed into like awards consideration. Right. It's pretty cool. It definitely is. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, when I think of like biopics, I don't necessarily think of somebody like Tanya Harding who gets this kind of treatment in a film. Usually we're thinking of like world leaders or, you know, yeah. Gandhi, whatever, but it's like, right. why do you think Tanya deserves this kind of treatment for a film? Well, there's probably a two-part answer to that. I mean, one, you can't deny that it's an unbelievably sensationalized story that, you know, you can't wrap your head around the fact that it's true. Right. I mean, it really is like a movie when you look at it. And then second of all, um, I think that she does, she does deserve a second chance, you know. I think, I think that she was definitely misunderstood and, and really uh, villainized back in the day when it happened and and I'm not sure if, it, if everyone really got to know her story and how you know what kind of person she was or how she grew up and, and the factors in her life that kind of con contributed to her you know unpredictable personality. Did you come to the script with like kind of preconceived notions about like what you had heard of the story? Of Absolutely Jeff yeah and yeah no. Was offended? Uh, no, a hundred percent. I mean I, I had recently had I had seen the 30 for 30 price of gold right. and that you know that kind of left me in that there was this weird aura around the story you know I feel the same way about the OJ situation it's like there's some mystique to it there's some myth to it at this point that you know you, you never really know for sure and you're kind of always going back to revisit it and so I was very I was left very curious about wanting to find out well who really is telling the truth and what's going on and then when I read the script which is essentially the interviews that Steven Rogers had with Tanya and Jeff right. respectively then that was sort of providing another take on it and um, so I, I was I, the interest for me was there to want to go and explore the hesitancy was also there because I never played anybody like that and you know Jeff looked a certain way he sounded a certain sure. way and there were all all these things said about him so I just in order you know usually you approach a role and you kind of try to find things about it that you relate to or you you know but it, here it felt it felt like I had to mold myself to something that already existed and right. that challenge was both scary and also really appealing because I'd never done that and ultimately I had to kind of look for other factors in, in the story beyond those preconceived ideas of what happened in the domestic abuse in order to kind of like you find know open up yeah otherwise yeah. I just would never you know, I would have doubted myself halfway through you, right, every time. You alluded to like one of the cool approaches about the film, which is that like it kind of it, it, it takes multiple perspectives. Like it realizes yeah. that there are always at least two sides to a story. And this right. is something that like you know even you in the public eye have probably experienced. I would imagine when you started to kind of like get to you know be well known and be written about in magazines. Like I'm sure there have been rumors that have that have like persisted over the years that you've seen perpetuated that you I'm laugh sure. at or or find annoying like is there one that sticks with you like that like keeps coming rumors? up rumors yeah or not a rumor or a story that's just become like well I am Mark Hamill's son. <laughs> We're gonna that get is to that. true <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah sorry I cut you off no I was just gonna say I mean is that something that you had to that took some getting used to like when you started to like see stuff about you that was just yeah. blatantly untrue look I think that's very relatable about this movie one thing is that I think we can all relate to I mean at this point you know, what is celebrity really? Like, I mean, we live in an age now where social media really dominates. Like, to some extent, we are all, right, out there right. in a way. Anybody I mean, can even kind of have anybody, that notoriety, yeah. Exactly. You post something, you get a comment. You, you know, somebody says something that's negative, not so nice, whatever. You, you, we're all responding to that feeling. So, so that's relatable in the movie when you're looking at characters or people that were really ill-equipped to deal with that level of fame. And so yeah. exactly... You know, I think what I was feeling, what I have felt maybe on a very small scale, they must have felt on a ginormous scale, sure. you know, Tanya and, and, and Jeff. But, but sure, that thing is always there. You're, it's never organic. It's never natural. You're not prepared for it. You know, you know my job is to talk to public figures and, 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 and a lot of very famous people. I have to say, your fans are very 
very <laughs> committed in, in a nice way. I mean, I experience it in a nice way at least. Are you? Well, is there a name for the Sebastian Stan fan base <laughs> that that you that you enjoy? Is there? Oh God! I, somehow I said this term "Winter's Children" a long time ago. I don't, <laughs> and it's stuck. stuck. <laughs> but it's I, I really yeah. I mean I, I feel very lucky. I, I again I don't have anything to compare it to because it's this is all I've ever known is the interaction I've had with them so far, right. and so I'm just I'm just glad to you know especially in comic cons like. I get to kind of see certain faces over time now. Like I've seen certain people, right. you know, over the years, and there's there's a weird familiarity there in a, in a way that like you're like growing up and they're growing up respectively with you in some way. And I guess it just opened my eyes up to looking at the idea of being known in a different, more humbling way. Sure. Is, is there is there a crossing the line moment? I mean, you want to embrace your fans and kind of make them feel like they they get a moment that's right. simply beyond just like a, a selfie kind of a thing. But like, right. is it like you know sidling up to you next to you at the urinal? Is it what, what's the <laughs> what's the line where all you're like, I appreciate the love, but maybe well, we need a second here. I mean, fortunately, I you know I haven't had something strange like that happen, um, but. Uh, I don't know. We're all people, right? right? I mean, like, it's just like, I I feel like in New York, you're bound to run into, you're, you're more bound to run into people you don't want to see than you are into, like, people who are excited to see you. Right. So it's like... Um, so a little love here and there is a nice thing. Yeah, I think if there wasn't, that would be probably not as great. So uh, shifting gears back, back to tangentially to the film, what would be your Olympic sport? Growing up, was there, like, a sport that you... I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was always basketball. Basketball was always my thing. I know that's like not like I don't think of Olympics that way, but you would um, have to go pro first and yeah. I don't. I like the Olympics. I mean, I like the you know all the all the different skiing and snowboarding type stuff. The extreme okay. sports were definitely something. I, More of an X Games guy than the yeah. Not that Olympics. I would ever do it. Obviously, I mean, I've never been on ice skates. It. You would you would you would be able to d make it obviously, but you would just respectfully <laughs> decline. I would yeah. I would definitely decline. That's yeah. really classy of you. Uh, well, well, you know, I try to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were chit-chatting when you, when you uh, sat down, still uh, hard at work on the Avengers films. You, I don't know if we call it trolling or what, but you signed a poster recently for... Oh, right. And there you go. See, that you ask about which lines are crossed. <laughs> um, was that a line crossed? I don't even know. So you kind of added the beard to uh, your right. buddy Chris Evans on a poster. A fan said to me, you can add anything you want on Chris's face. And I was like... Well, it's either a thought bubble or it's that, so. So should we expect Steve Rogers as, as Nomad next time? But listen, I, I, I mean, you can expect whatever you want. I, I, first of all, I wasn't even the first person to say that. Like somebody else had gone out and said he's Nomad or something. So um, he is missing are. the star on his chest, so I don't know what that means. But, um, I think you do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I would probably, the way that's been going is I would be on set and go, is that like, so you are missing the star on the chat. Does that mean that you're, you know, I would probably discover it on the, in the moment. <laughs> Do you, are you satisfied? Do you feel like you have an arc through these two Avengers films? I do, I do, yeah. I mean, look, I, I, my, my job there is to serve the bigger story, yeah. I mean, right now, um, and, and so, but I do. Uh, there, there, is a, there is an arc there for him, and there's a continuation that's gonna kind of like line up to what we've seen so far. Um, so lastly, you alluded to this uh, earlier. Uh, fans have noticed, and you've acknowledged, that there is a resemblance, perhaps, to a young Luke Skywalker, to a young Mark Hamill. Yeah, Mark and, Hamill. And so, he, here's my question. Is this something that we can actually will into, into the universe? Is this something you seriously would be into, or is this I, just one of those fun things to talk about in interviews and I make the internet excited? <laughs> I believe in the power of the people. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Bane for a second. <laughs> no, I, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could do that for us. <laughs> maybe I could. Um, no, I, I do. Look, you know, the fans can will many things to happen. Okay. I mean, I, I believe that. Uh, but um, I'm happy to continue talking about it at length at all times. I just really feel for Mark Hamill, who I think is getting berated now with this while he's out there promoting his movie. So I, I hope he doesn't, you know, get annoyed by all the... But he chose to call me his father, so, you know, my father. So he, he called himself uh, my father, so I guess he brought it on himself as Here, well. Here's an opportunity to seal the deal. Here's your audition for Luke Skywalker. Right. Some iconic lines. Would you like to do your little audition tape for Luke Skywalker? Oh, good God. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, I, this is going to be so bad. Here's your camera. Um, 
I don't even know what Alderaan is. Oh, no. I know, it's really already. bad. I, I have. I mean, <laughs> Introduce yourself to the camera. You know how uh, you audition. Okay, yeah. Hey, Sebastian Stan. I'm uh, six foot, and I'll be auditioning for the uh, role of Luke Skywalker. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I can't even do it. Okay. <laughs> I want to come with you to Alderaan. <laughs> There's nothing for me here now. I want to... I want to learn the ways of the Force and become a Jedi, like my father. But I was going into Toast Station to pick some power converters. Did you write that line? Tashi, Tashi Station. Damn it. Sebastian. I really lost. I, okay. How about, okay, this one's good. I never turn to the dark side. You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi like my father before me. <laughs> this is, you just made me look like a real asshole. But I mean, I that. Perfect. Uh, um, I'm like really believing like I'm going to have a shot at this movie. Like, you did thanks up until to you. the last minute ago. Oh, God. Uh, congratulations Thank on your film, man. buddy. It's always a pleasure to see you. Me and uh, good luck on your role in the upcoming uh, Star Wars prequel. Yeah, well, you know, I'll call you first. <laughs> yeah, please I'll do. Find you wherever you, you might are. need some coaching. I'll help you out. Please, come over anytime. <laughs>